Interestingly, one more piece of news about Starship version 2. Although the render of the Starship's next generations was revealed in early April, it sounds like there are still many questions about their exact shape. Suspicions were further raised when numerous Pathfinder components of the second variant rocket were recorded on camera showing significant discrepancies between theory and reality. Find out and give your own speculation in today's episode of TechMap. Prior to going deep down, I want you to keep in mind Elon Musk's saying about V2. Version 2 of the ship holds more propellant, reduces dry mass, and improves reliability. And, of course, even what he showed us in the company's presentation recently. Okay, let's drive and dive in. As we all know, SpaceX's iterative approach to production allows for batches of replicas to be created for testing. Thus, they can free to scrap numerous vehicles and skip to the better revision. A similar thing principle is also applied during the transition from version 1 to version 2 vehicles. In this case, some hypotheses said that Ship 36 could be the first V2 and Ships 33 34, and 35 are being skipped in favor of it. It's so great that several new nose cones appeared in Star Factory, which should be for the new ships as well as Pathfinders. They look clean and in the early production phase. At a glance, there is not much change here compared V1 and either being blunter nor pointer. As Elon's presentation, the most notable change is about the size. V1's nose cone, which is assembled by two steel big rings, is particularly large, with a diameter of around 9 meters. The V2's nose cone will be likely added Added by one or two more similar rings making it higher considerably but its diameter is slightly narrower. SpaceX calculated the reasonable proportion between height and width to benefit the rocket's payload capacity while reducing excess dead mass. Other points include the heat shield and flaps. The forward flaps mounted side of the nose cone also get larger to suit the overall size of the rocket. More importantly, these flaps must be structurally more robust to withstand the aerodynamic loads and mechanical stresses experienced during flight. The size of the rocket and the forces involved may influence the design and materials used for the flaps to ensure adequate strength and durability. For the thermal protection system, gaining lessons from the previous flight tests, SpaceX has been testing the use of significantly smaller heat tiles that use the pin system for the bond. The tile pins are the standard size rather than the small tiles. The tiny ones will be in specific areas. This is such a huge leap because V1, the tiles in this area are usually fixed into place with an adhesive. Okay, now let's dissect its internal organs. The liquid oxygen header tank, which sits at the very tip of Starship's nose cone, has seemingly been redesigned. Instead of the old design just having a pipe jabbed into the side of it, we have a new slanted shape that has a funnel built into it. This could provide a protective layer for the pipe inside which may be related to fluid management in both the horizontal and vertical orientations. The next one is about payload bay path finders. In April, the new ring section was spotted outside of the Star Factory, which features an odd three-ring section with lots of internal stringers. Three rings tall is the most notable upgrade rather than five rings tall on the current payload bay section. It is worth noting that it's just Pathfinder, so it doesn't mean the three-ring structure will be built on the official prototypes. However, who knows the assembly process will be changed, and they will stack more rings on top serving for the increased size of the upper stage. Secondly, the payload bay could be moved probably lower because its dispenser cutout is on a ring seam as opposed to a solid ring. This makes sense once the payload room inside is planned to be stretched. The dispenser door gets rounder while the old one is very angular, more suitable for the more modern reinforcement materials on the ships. The layout of internal stringers gets denser, which could increase the integrity structure. We heard that the payload bay door did not close tightly in Flight 3. This made the gas release and affected considerably to the pressure inside. By strengthening the structure, we can partly reduce the negative consequences of that incident. These stringers seem to be a solid design instead of perforated on the surface, simulating those installed on Ship 26 earlier this year. While this reinforcement can make the internal structure stronger and sturdier, thereby improving reliability, it also adds some dead mass. SpaceX definitely considered this problem. So what about super heavy? A trend in all of Starship's hardware indicates the close relationship between Starship and super heavy. While there have been various obvious things spotted on the ship, the updates on Booster V2 are still a mystery. The most potential object here is Booster 16. A few weeks ago, the booster's aft section seemed to have received its liquid oxygen landing tank. It might be for Booster 16 as the aft sections for Booster 14 and 15 already have their landing tanks. What these landing tanks have in common is that they don't appear to be much different from the existing V-1 Super Heavy. Therefore, it is likely that those boosters will be skipped in the future 
to make way for the introduction of true version 2 boosters. In theory, Booster V2 stands out at 72.3 meters in height in the middle between V1 and V3, in resemblance to V3. Second variant, Super Heavy stays apart from V1 by 3 components, a hot staging ring, grid fins, and the engine section. It's clear that SpaceX will start adopting the Soyuz design hot staging ring as a V2, aiming to maximize the surface area of the holes without compromising structural and integrity. The grid fin's location moved down pretty much and to explain this, my initial guess is to stay far away from the extreme exhaust gas released from the upper stage during the stage separation. Furthermore, the size of the grid fins has also been increased. With the huge size of the V2 and V3 boosters, those fins will be more than twice as long. To be honest, I'm not sure about the actual reasons behind these revisions, but luckily one of my smart viewers helped me perfect my answer by sharing his thoughts. SpaceX found that the grid fins on the Falcon Heavy side boosters were not as effective as the Falcon 9 because the the Falcon Heavy side boosters had nose cones adjacent to the fins. Instead of a good amount of body, the interstage section that changed airflow over slash through the fins with Falcon Heavy side booster fins flying in more turbulence, meaning less effective due to airflow around those nose cones. Super heavy grid fins may get larger and move away from the end of the rocket for the same reasons. The engine part looks neater thanks to the simplification on the Raptor, which not only reduces the total weight, but also could half the propellant loading time when a booster is loaded with propellant. Many comments showed the change in the Starship stages could lead to a change in OLM structure. In this situation, the hard points location would move down a little bit. Thus, it's unnecessary to expand the height of OLIT. Both ship quick disconnect and booster quick disconnect should be corrected a bit to accommodate the new design of the vehicle. In short, all my analyses in the video are highly speculative to think about, and it will certainly take time to confirm their accuracy. With that said, there's certainly a lot of development still to look forward to, especially since Starship Flight 4 with version 1 hardware is yet to launch. Through Flight 4 or even Flight 5 and 6, SpaceX will gather enough data to fully know something new on V2 some of which would not fit the current paradigm, and the company will start to design for the new paradigm. And as my audience commented, the next flight will be a test of new thinking using the old rocket. They may even change V2 more rather than less. We'll have to wait and see. Pay attention to the altitude and velocity numbers on the next re-entry trip, and the distance traveled compared to the previous trip. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.